You're listening to 7-Minute Stories with Aaron Califato. I'm Corey. I coordinate the podcast. We've decided to do a weekly t-shirt giveaway. All you have to do for a chance to win is subscribe, rate, and write a review on Apple Podcasts. If you don't have Apple Podcasts, you can share a favorite episode on social media using the hashtag 7-Minute Stories. Make sure and listen as I'll announce a winner each week. Thanks, everyone, for your ratings and reviews. This week's winner is Frank O'Reedy. I already reached out to Frank and his shirt will be there in about a week. Thanks again. Now, on to the story. This episode, The Interview. My dream was to be an artist, an actor, a creative, living and working out of New York City. I wanted it so bad. And I had been living out in New Jersey for a few years, and I had some success, but not enough to sustain a career. And in 2009, things were not looking good. Things were pretty bad. The economy was collapsing. My student debt was piling up. Jobs were vanishing. There literally were no jobs. Banks were collapsing. It was chaos, that whole thing that was happening in our entire country. It was a global economic crisis. And and my personal life, it was a pressure cooker because the, the bills are adding up. And I knew that if something didn't happen soon, you know, I, I'm working a dead end job at a hotel doing room service off the Jersey Parkway. My my fiance is fresh out of grad school. She's working as a social worker. We're barely hanging on. She's the only one really making money. And if something didn't happen soon, it's going to have to pack up my bags and it's going to have to leave and go back home to Cleveland, a failure. And I didn't want to go home a failure because in my framework, this was the only way to live this dream. And I couldn't give up on it. What would my life be like if I gave up on it? What would I do if I, if it didn't if I didn't do something that lit me up? What would I do? And what would that life look like? So something had to happen and I had a strategy. I decided that I was going to apply to every theater and arts organization in the area for 2 weeks straight. I figure if I got a salaried position at one of those institutions it could be a pathway, a next step for this dream. And so I did. I didn't sleep for two weeks. I'm just clicking and sending emails. Hundreds and hundreds of emails go out. And as they all go out, I'm getting back hundreds and hundreds of emails, except when I'm opening them up and I see them pop up in my inbox, they are all rejection letters. And rejection letters all sound the same. They say something like, to who it may concern, or dear sir or madam, thank you for your interest in this position. However, and when that word, that however word comes up, your stomach drops. It's the worst feeling in the world because you start off reading with hope, with belief, and then the however thing happens and the stomach thing happens. And it was that over and over again for nearly two weeks to the point where I was done. I said, we're going to pack our bags. I'm done. I'm I'm giving up. Tired of this. And by the end of the two weeks, I got one email that I opened and it looked differently. And I read it and it was an offer for an interview. It was an offer for an interview at a prominent theater and arts organization in Manhattan for a salaried position in the marketing department. This was it. Unfortunately, they wanted me to come in in two days. And unfortunately, I only had $95 in my bank account because we had paid all of our bills. I had nothing left. I only had enough money to purchase a really bad used suit and a one-way ticket to Manhattan. I figured I'd figure out some way to get back home to New Jersey. It didn't matter. I just had to be there. I couldn't miss this interview. So I get my cheap suit, and I buy my one-way ticket, and the night before, I don't sleep. And the morning of, I eat a dry piece of Wonder Bread toast and some really bad coffee that I made because I was in a rush, and I didn't want to be late. And I get on the Jersey Transit at the Little Silver train station, and I remember kind of barreling towards Manhattan on the train and swaying back and forth. I'm just looking at all the people with me in my train car and I see their, their fists are clenched. I see feet tapping. I see people's head bobbing to the music they're listening to in their earbuds. I see people reading their newspapers and scrolling down their phone and looking out the window and reflecting on their life and people biting their lip and pursing their mouth. And it's this 
nexus of neuroses. And I'm just part of it. And the next thing I know, I'm sitting in a cafe in midtown Manhattan, waiting for a guy named Mark. Mark's going to be doing the interview. He's from the marketing department. And as I'm sitting in the cafe, I realized I only ate two dirty pieces of Wonder Bread in the morning and I'm starving. And all around me is cinnamon rolls and egg and cheese sandwiches and wraps and the coffee, all the coffee being brewed and being pressed, the dark, rich coffee being poured into giant mugs and the steam rising on the top of it and people drinking it and it's warming their insides. And there I am just tremoring with nervousness and hunger, but I had to push through it. I had something important ahead of me. And at that moment, a guy walks in, he looks like a Mark, but he also looks like a guy who just is looking for someone and we make eye contact and it is Mark. And Mark, I gotta describe this for you. I'm observing Mark and his circumstance. Mark is very calm. He has this aura of just, he's content and calm. He kind of glides in to the cafe. It almost was annoying how calm he was. And he comes up and he goes, I haven't eaten breakfast. Uh, Aaron, I'm going to go to the uh, the counter, would you like to come with me? And I said, no, because I didn't have a cent to my name. So I let Mark go to the counter and I'm waiting for him. And he buys a cinnamon roll, the size of his head and a mocha with a pile of whipped cream on top of it. And he sits across from me and he starts conducting the interview and he's doing it while he's drinking his mocha and the whipped creams on his mustache. And all of my intent attention and all of my passion is in these questions and my answers. And then meanwhile, Mark is eating his cinnamon roll and picking it apart with his fingers and it's sticking to his fingers and he's just putting each little piece in his mouth. And it's almost like he's disinterested, like he doesn't care. And I realized in that moment, an insight to circumstance, right? Like here's, here's the reality. Here's the world I was living in. In that moment, that interview from me, in that cafe with Mark was the most important moment in my creative life. One of the most important moments in my life right there for Mark, that meeting, that interview was just another cup of coffee. And we finished the interview and I did everything I could. And I felt like I, I did well. He thanked me and he kind of glided out of the cafe. And I realized a couple of things. One, that I would pretty much do anything to fight for my dream. And I was proud of that. But I also had more pressing matters because I had to figure out a way to get back home. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed this week's story. I just wanted to take a couple of seconds to tell you how important it is to me and how committed I am to making sure that 7-Minute Stories is an authentic space where you and I connect through the art of storytelling without any dependency on ads or advertisements or anything like that. That we make this thing an 100% listener-supported podcast. And you can be a huge part of making that possible by going to 7MinuteStoriesPod.com. That's the number 7 minutestoriespod.com and when you're there click the merch tab on the website and buy yourself an awesome t-shirt or an amazing hoodie and I know we're going to keep adding more stuff to that merchandise page so keep checking back with it I appreciate you all and I'll talk to you next week <laughs>